In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use clipping masks to make a collage in Adobe Photoshop. With an image already open and resized in Photoshop, first click on the Crop tool and make sure the Rule of Thirds overlay is checked. And you want to adjust the crop of the image so that your focal point is in the center of one of the nine boxes and not being intersected by the cross lines. And you also need to make sure that you don't pull too far out and expose the transparent space. Then accept, or in this case, I'll cancel any cropping since it's not needed. Go up to View and choose New Guide Layout to add some guidelines. We want a layout with three columns and three rows, and you can delete any gutters or margins and click OK. Find the Shape Tools in the toolbar on the left, and I'm going to use the Rounded Rectangle tool. Up in the options bar, you can adjust the radius of the rounded corners, and this might take some experimenting to find a radius that you like. Then click and drag out a shape that covers the first box in the overlay. In the properties panel, you can still adjust the radius of the corners to your liking. Adobe gives you lots of different ways to do a task, so throughout this video, I will show you a variety of options to accomplish these steps. Next, switch to your move tool, and you will make two copies of this shape. You can hold Alt or Option on your keyboard to duplicate your selection and press the Shift key at the same time to keep it aligned with the guides and then drop. And then do it again a second time. And if for some reason the Alt or Option shortcut isn't working, you can also edit copy and edit paste the shape. Then select all three shapes. I'll do so in my Layers panel while holding the Shift key and create a copy of all three shapes at once and then do it again one final time for the bottom row. Select just one of your shapes. I'll choose this bottom right one, and then go up to Edit, Free Transform, or use the shortcut keys, Command or Control T on your keyboard, and that will bring up the bounding box around that shape. And you can adjust it however you would like. I'm gonna rotate mine, but you also wanna make sure that it doesn't fall off the edge of the picture plane. And in the option bar above, you can either confirm or cancel the transformation. I'll go ahead and confirm, and then click on the next shape, Command or Control T for the transformation shortcut, make your changes, and hit the Enter or Return key on your keyboard as a shortcut to accept that transformation. Continue doing these steps for all nine shapes, and make sure they all fit within your picture plane. Once you've made your transformations, you can decide on how you would like them to overlap, and if you want to show any gaps between them, that's okay. Or you can move the images so that they all overlap each other with no gaps in between. Then you can go up to View and clear your canvas guides. Now over in your Layers panel, you have your image. Make sure it's selected, and then go to Layer and Duplicate Layer. Click OK, and now you have a copy of your image. You can also right-click on the layer and choose Duplicate Layer and click OK. Or you can use the shortcut keys, Command or Control J on your keyboard. You'll need to do this nine times, nine different copies for each of the shapes. I'll go ahead and keep the original background layer just in case, but I'll turn off its visibility. Select one of your background copies and move it above the top shape. Look for the blue lines and you'll know where that layer will be dropped. And then you'll move a background copy above each of the nine shapes. So it will alternate photo, rectangle, photo, rectangle, etc., leaving the original at the bottom. You will also want a layer with a fill color as a backdrop for your collage. So you can go to Layer, New Fill Color, and choose one of these backgrounds. Or at the bottom of your Layers panel, you can click this icon and it will bring you those same choices. You can choose whichever, but I'll choose a solid color for my background layer. And then I'll pick something, um, maybe a blue to match the lake, but you can always change the color later. And then you'll wanna make sure that that colorful layer is at the bottom of your Layers panel. Now you're gonna make clipping masks out of each photo and shape combination. Starting with the top photo, make sure it's selected, and then click on Layer, Create Clipping Mask. This little arrow by the thumbnail shows you that it has applied a clipping mask to that shape, but you won't see any change in the image itself until you create all nine clipping masks. 
Click on the next photo in your Layers panel, and to do the shortcut to creating a clipping mask, hold Option or Alt on your keyboard and your cursor will look like this. And then while still holding Option or Alt, click on the line between the image and the shape layer, and there it's done. Move down to the next photo and do the same, and continue until each photo and shape pairing have been made into clipping masks. On the last one, you'll finally see the image, what it looks like with those masks. You've got a lot of layers to deal with, so you can filter out layers using the top section of the Layers panel and just see layers you want to see. Make sure the switch is toggled on, and the first icon will show you just the layers with the image itself. But I'll unselect that. What we want is this icon, which will show us just the shape layers. So now you'll see just your shapes, but if you still see both, make sure you turn off that first icon. Now click on one of your shape layers. I'll start with the one on the bottom. And to identify how it correlates with the picture, click on Command or Control T, and I see that it's the first image on the top left. So I'll hit Return or Enter to turn that transformation option off. With the layer still selected, come down to the bottom of the Layers panel and click the icon that says FX, and a list of effects will pop up. I want to add a stroke to this shape. And this dialog box will appear. You'll see a check mark next to Stroke. And I see over here the options for stroke, but if you don't see these options and it looks like this instead, click on the word stroke specifically to bring up the stroke options. I'm gonna change the color of the stroke so it stands out more, but this is optional. You can keep your stroke white. I just wanna make sure it stands out in the example. And then you can adjust the size of the stroke to your liking. You can also adjust other things like opacity, for instance. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my stroke back to white because I know that's what I want mine to look like and click OK. In the panels, I can now see the effect that's been added to that layer. I'll add another effect and instead I can just double click on the word effects underneath to bring this box back up. I'd like to add a drop shadow so I'll make sure it's checked and then I'll click on the words to get the formatting options here so you can make changes in this box. But a really fun trick is to actually click on the drop shadow itself in the image and then use your mouse to move it around to the angle that you would like. Once you've set that angle, Back in the box, opacity is another good setting to play around with. And once it's all set, click OK. And now you'll see both effects under your layer in the Layers panel. But we want to apply these effects to all nine layers. This is very easy to do. Right click on the effects you've already set and then go down to Copy Layer Style. Then click and hold Shift while you select the other eight layers and with them selected, right click again and find Paste Layer Style. And voila, the same effects have been added to each shape's layer. If you'd like to collapse the effects, you can click this little arrow here and it will collapse those back to single layers. And you can also clear the filters of your layers or you can click on the first icon to bring back the photos. If you'd like to make adjustments to the order in which your shapes are overlapped in your image, You'll want to hold the shift key and click both the photo and the shape as a pair. And then you can drag them around in your layers panel. For instance, I'll move these up to the top and keep your eye on the middle top photo in my image. You'll see it move to the front. And I will definitely want the photo with my focal point to be on top of the others. So I'll find the image and its shape in the layers panel, hold shift and move them both up to the top. If you'd like to change how your shapes are rotated, for instance, I will rotate this one a different direction. I'll click on it and see that it corresponds to this layer in my layers panel. Make sure just the shape layer is selected and then click Command or Control T and you can go back in and change its rotation. I'll do those steps one more time to adjust this bottom middle one as well and scooch it over to the left a little bit. If you want to make changes to the image, you can click on a photo and then click Command or Control T, but notice that it only changes that one photo. You would have to do that eight more times to make the photos cohesive. So unfortunately, if you want to change the overall image, you would have to go back into your history and start again. And you creative types have probably figured out that you can do this same effect using different shapes and using nine different photos to create a mosaic collage. Now, once you've finished, you'll want to save your work. So go to File, Save As, 
and I'll save it in my Creative Cloud files in a folder for this class, renaming it so it doesn't copy over my original. I use my first name, last initial underscore, and this is Unit 01.2 Collage. I save it as a Photoshop document with all my layers, and then I definitely want to put this on my web page, so I'll go back to File Save As, keep this new name, but switch the format to a JPEG, and click Save and OK. And that is how you use clipping masks to create a collage in Adobe Photoshop.